Okay, so I wanted to take a second to kind of clarify what we talked about at the end of last week, these crazy piecewise function things. And so let's do an example of one, let's call it, um, let's see, here we go, let's call it f of x, and it's going to be equal to one of two things. It's either going to be equal to negative x plus one when x is strictly less than zero, and then it's gonna be equal to x plus two whenever x is greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so first things first, let's take a look at how we figure out what f of x is for some given x. So um, say the problem says, okay, well, what is f of five? Okay, so what we wanna do here is we wanna take a look. Now, the number that we care about is this five. This is the x of five. What we wanna do is we wanna look here or here and say, okay, well, which one of these ranges does five fall into? Is five less than zero or is five greater than or equal to zero? So to put a fine point on it, if five is less than zero, because this is our X, we use number one, which is this whole thing. And if five is greater than or equal to zero, and again, that's our X, we use two. So that's this thing right here. Okay, so we say, all right, well, which one does this, which one is true? Okay, is five equal to zero? Or five less than zero? And no. So we don't use that one. But is five greater than or equal to zero? And the answer is yes. Okay, so since five is greater than or equal to zero, it falls into this two, this second category. So this is the one that we're gonna use. Okay, so because it met this particular um, qualification, it met this requirement that it was strict, that it was greater than or equal to zero, we're going to pretend now, um, so let's pretend um, that f of x is just equal to x plus 2. Okay, so at this stage, we don't even care anymore about this whole one thing. It's like, blah, nobody even, nobody likes you. Um, because we're not in that range. We're in the greater than or equal to zero range, so that's the only thing we care about. So if you're working these problems, just totally forget that that other thing even exists. And um, just use this one right here. Because we know when x is equal to 5 that this is what we can use. So now we just solve it like a normal problem. So we say, okay, well now I've got f of blah equals blah plus 2. And my blah is negative 5. So I have negative 5 plus 2. So f of 5, or how could I make this more complicated? I don't know where I got my negative sign from. Uh, much better. So f of 5. So now I have f of 5 equals 5 plus 2. So that's just five plus two or seven. So for this function given up here, f of five is seven because it fell into this category. So let's take a look at a different, um, we're just gonna take this exact same thing. Um, we'll say again, same function, f of x is equal to negative x plus one when x is less than zero and it's equal to x plus two when x is greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so now we say, well, when is, or what is f of negative two? Okay, so now we go and we look, all right, the thing that we care about is this negative two. Now, we say, okay, well, if negative two is less than zero, use this first one. Um, but if negative 2 is greater than or equal to 0, we're going to use the second one. So evaluate which one is true. Well, is negative 2 less than 0? Yes. Good. Is negative 2 greater than or equal to 0? No. So we don't use this number 2, which was this one. Um, so now what we can do whenever we solve this problem for this particular x value of negative two, 
we just pretend this second one doesn't exist because we want to use one. So now let's pretend that um, f of x is just equal to negative x plus one. We don't even care about this number two thingy anymore because it has absolutely nothing to do with the x that we're looking at. We're looking at x is equal to negative two. So the only thing we care about is whatever falls into this first category here, which is that x less than zero, because that's where we that's where we meet our requirements. So let's just pretend f of x equals negative x plus one, and we're just going to solve it like we normally would. So we've got f of something or other equals negative something or other plus one, and our something or other is negative two. So we plug in our little negative twos. So minus a negative two is positive two plus one or three. So in this case, f of negative two is equal to three. And so that would be our answer. Um, and that's kind of how we work these problems. We'll give you one more example, new page, and we'll look at the exact same thing again. So we've got f of x is equal to, I'm just rewriting it, negative x plus one and um, x plus two. This one's for x less than zero and this is for x greater than or equal to zero. So now let's say it as asking us what happens when f of x um, for f of zero right here. All right, so let's see. So this is our x. This is what we're looking at, zero. So if zero is less than zero, use one. And if zero is greater than or equal to zero, use two. Two. And this is where it gets a little funky, just because you're right there at the transition point. But what you need to notice is that number one only works when that x thing is strictly less than zero, okay? Whereas the second one, it's totally happy with x being equal to zero. Anything, where did you go? Um, anything greater than or equal to zero, it is just completely comfortable with, and that's what we've got. This is true. X is in fact greater than or equal to zero. So this is the one that we care about and we're just gonna pretend this one doesn't exist anymore. So we'll go ahead and we'll say for all intents and purposes, for all we care, um, for all we care, F of X is equal to that second one, that X plus two. And we can just go over here and say, I don't like you you're not my friend, you're not going to be helpful, you're just here to confuse me. So since that zero falls into the second category of being greater than or equal to zero, we're going to use this x is or x plus two for our function. So now we just proceed forward. So we've got f of zero is equal to zero plus two. Zero plus two is two. So f of zero is equal to two. Excellent.